Hey guys, I'm finally back with a new video. I missed for several weeks now, but that's because I wasn't feeling that great. I was in a great shape and I missed looking at my camera, reading your comments and just doing what I like to do the most. But luckily, you know, I'm much better now and I will start writing and filming new videos. And today I'm going to check uh, Mezzi's latest creation, the 109 Pro which I first met in May 2022. But if I'm thinking about, you know, ideas and sketches, then I know about them since around 2017, where Mezzi was still gathering ideas about an open back, a 99 classics like a headphone. That's long behind us as uh, Mezzi retuned and reshaped them for many times now. These are going for 7.99 bucks, and I do believe is the right time to check them out. While these are looking similarly to 99 Classics, uh, these are much bigger, mostly because they have bigger ear caps, and that happens because they have bigger drivers inside. So from 40 millimeters, they went with 50 millimeter drivers. For the first time in uh, Mezzi's history, these are 100% uh, crafted headphones in Bayamare here in Romania, which uh, makes me actually very proud about. So everything from structure, uh, ear caps, ear pads, and finishing with the drivers is made in Romania. So that is actually pretty cool. Uh, they don't have uh, rods and uh, you know, uh, you don't need to, you just put them on your head and they will automatically adjust to your head size, which I believe is pretty cool. They are very, very comfortable to wear. I can wear them for whole day long and that wouldn't be a problem. They actually work with big and small heads, which is an amazing thing, something that is not happening with plenty of headphones. Even my son loves uh, using these headphones. They are staying just right on his small head. At 375 grams, uh, these are actually lightweight by uh, desktop headphone standards. So again, you can wear them for uh, long periods of time and that wouldn't be a problem. They have detachable cables, which come in a 3.5 mm termination, suggesting that you can drive this with pretty much anything that has a headphone jack, but more about that in a minute. Cable quality is decent. It's actually very flexible. I don't hear microphonics when touching it, and I see no reason to change it, unless you really like having high purity silver or copper conductors in the cables, or if you want to go the balanced route, which Mezzi will be providing at an extra expense. As for tech inside them, as I mentioned before, these are 100% in-house made headphones, uh, including their drivers going with a bigger 50 millimeter driver that uh, sandwiched together a uh, beryllium coated polymer with a cellulose carbon fiber composite into a single driver. It's more durable versus conventional dynamic drivers, yet a lightweight that help reducing resonance that may lead to a higher distortion. You can spot a spider-shaped pattern right here with an uh, acoustically transparent mesh on both sides, which will expose the drivers from both sides, uh, creating the most open pattern to date, which I'm pretty sure will leave a positive mark on sound quality, but especially in the sound stage department. With a sensitivity of 112 dB per a single milliwatt of power, you can drive this with pretty much anything that has a headphone jack, but more about that in a minute. All right, folks, this is more than enough information, and I think that is the right time to hit some eardrums. Sound-wise, these won't wow you at first, uh, mostly because everything is not, uh, you know, elevated, uh, is not highlighted, is not playing at different altitudes in terms of frequency response. They are going with a uh, reference tuning, so everything plays uh, pretty much at the same level. Uh, they have, you know, a perfect balance of bass, mid, bench, and treble, something that I cannot say about 99 Classics. Actually, they look, you know, pretty much the same like 99 Classics, but sound-wise, there is nothing in common with 99 Classics. It's a paradigm shift uh, with the 99 classes because there is uh, actually close to nothing in common except for looks. 
And knowing that Dirty Shirt's drummer, Vlad, was behind its tuning, I'm not surprised at all that these are sounding so, so much better in the treble region. There is not only more information in the treble, but there is, it's more extended, there is more shimmer, there is more vibration. Um, uh, the treble just feels more real in a way. It feels metallic when it needs to, with cymbals, for example. It feels very textured, it feels very fast, actually. It's much faster sounding compared to that of the 99 Classic, so the wall treble region is actually the biggest improvement in terms of frequency response. Uh, this is actually much more detailed. There is a lot more detail happening everywhere, not only the treble, in the mid-range, in the bass as well. Uh, they have a much faster decay, a faster transmit response, a faster timing, and of course, when you have super fast timing, then you can hear those very small, you know, tiny shifts in terms of dynamics, you know, uh, small details that are usually happening in the bass, something that I couldn't hear with 99 Classics. I no longer feel a massive blob in the mid bass and mid range, something that was happening on the 99 Classics with a roll of, uh, you know, upper treble and roll of uh, sub bass that is not happening in here. This is a more linear, way, way more linear. And while they have a few rises, especially in the treble a little bit, uh, they are going with a reference tuning much closer to that of the Mezi Elite, for example. Another pleasant surprise was getting a much more uh, believable, much more natural soundstage, you know, uh, much closer to what I'm getting from flagship planar magnetic headphones, open back planar magnetic headphones. So, compared to 99 Classics, which are sounding constantly in terms of soundstage, always having, you know, a very similar soundstage, regardless of what music we are listening, these are trying to, you know, escape my head. Uh, these are sounding just massive with, uh, you know, live tunes with uh, classical music and just cozy, much smaller sounding with some uh, jazz tunes, for example. Something that was not happening with uh, 99 Classics. So these are trying to interplay a little bit with my imagination, you know, uh, trying to play some tricks on me. So when I'm listening to live tunes, I can hear the music uh, perfectly arranged somewhere around my head. Uh, something that is not happening so great or doesn't sound so amazing on 99 Classics. The only thing that might tire you down in the first hours of use is a slight treble itch. And that came as a shock to me because uh, very uh, first generation IMs and headphones by Mezi, like you know, 99 Classics, Imperium, Mezi Rai Penta, were very strong in the mid bass, very strong in the mid range, but not so much in the treble. This is a very different headphone. This is a big change of pace because they have a much more extended frequency response uh, in the sub bass, in the treble. So this is a new Mesa sound and you should expect uh, the future headphones to have a very similar tonality. If you find them a little brightish sounding in treble, you can uh, just um, you know wait a little bit because after some hours of use, that will go away, or you can use maybe some a warmer sounding setup, maybe a full discrete uh, headphone amplifier, maybe a full tube headphone amplifier, or to wireless the DAX, uh, the possibilities are endless. So you can make them much more mellower or smoother sounding if you will. When it comes to power requirements at 40 ohms and 112 dB per single milliwatt of power, uh, you can drive these with pretty much anything. These are among the easiest to drive headphones that are sitting on my headphone wall. And together with Apos Caspian and Kenyon Valley, these are three easiest to drive headphones that I have at my disposal, desktop headphones. So of course you can drive these with smartphones, with tablets, uh, but they will definitely sound much better out of dedicated electronics that have a better uh, dark section. So you can go with some uh, small USB dongles with Bluetooth gizmos. If you have money for something like this, I strongly recommend you getting a clearer sounding DAC. It can be a portable DAC, you know, you name it. And that comes as a plus, but also as a minus, because in no time you'll be upgrading your DACs, uh, your headphone amplifiers, <laughs> something that I'm constantly doing on a monthly basis. So yeah, uh, these are very easy to drive, uh, but uh, they will definitely sound uh, faster, more impactful from dedicated electronics, especially from a desktop headphone amplifier. So keep that in mind. 
uh, they can uh, get uh, more impactful, they can get uh, slightly faster sounding with such creation, especially with solid state electronics. Regardless what I was using, but uh, you know, I used the most uh, some small dongles like BTR 7 by 5 and Shining UA5. Uh, dynamics weren't really pressing the brakes, uh, sound stage was still quite impressive. Uh, everything was at its right place and uh, that's actually quite a positive change of pace. Uh, fulfilling my hi-fi needs even straight out of some very small devices. Moving on to transient response, I find them very fast sounding, I find them a snappy sounding with modern tunes. Um, they will be going in and out in split seconds, so these are much faster sounding compared to 99 Classics for example. However, they won't bring you the full might of the Thunder God uh, when bass notes will be crashing on your head. So they are moderately impactful and uh, so so in terms of bass slam. And I suspected that those Velour earpods will be the culprit, so I did some, some digging on my own and I tried some full leather earpods. These are from Apos Caspian and these are from Kenneton uh, Valley. And sure enough, the bass slam uh, uh, came back into them. Um, these were much more uh, tampier sounding, much more powerful punchier sounding in the bass. Uh, the bass actually went up by around 5 dB, something like that, and the upper treble went down by around 4 dB. So of course it was a massive difference in terms of frequency response. They were no longer reference sounding in a way, but much more fun sounding, more like 99 classics uh, with uh, the skills and the traits of 109 Pro. So maybe it would be a great idea making some uh, leather pads in the future, something that they're already doing with uh, Meze Elite, with Meze Empyrean, you know, having uh, velour pads and leather ear pads. So they'll be covering a much wider audience and much wider musical genre. So they will work better actually with electronic and rock metal, even if the sound is actually narrower and these are not breathing so much. So the sound is not so spacious, but it's more fun in a way. So I do believe it will be a great idea making leather ear pads for uh, such a pair of headphones. Personally, I like uh, the way they are because uh, I can rock out and, you know, uh, headbang with something like Meze Elite with leather ear pads, maybe with some Kenaton Rognir, with Odyssey LCD4, with um, Haifaman Susvara put on some mean looking headphone amplifiers. And when I want to relax and, you know, just uh, calm my spirits, I'll be using this one. However, uh, there are people that are not so fortunate and they have much less headphones, maybe just a single set, maybe just these ones and nothing else. And that's why I do believe that two pairs of earpods would be just a great idea. The real kicker and something that will impress you right away, I do believe is the sound stage and scale. So they are sounding actually very impressive in this uh, department. Uh, you can say that twice the size compared to 99 Classics. Uh, those weren't trying to push the sounds outside my head, but uh, these are doing it so, so much easier. So these are not uh, shooting for the top spot in my ranking, so these are not uh, you know, trying to outclass those uh, Sennheiser HD800S, but they will surely pose a problem for even for Meze Imperial, Meze Elite, put on some uh, leather ear pads. So uh, these are actually quite impressive in terms of uh, scale, depth, sound stage. They just uh, like to play with my imagination all the time. In this regard, uh, these are stamping over those 99 classics without the right uh, to appeal. These are, are much better compared to even my co-designed Apos Caspian headphone and even better compared to pricier headphones like Kenneton Valley, like Elzetich Mania, which mind you are much more expensive. So again, the soundstage part is actually quite impressive. Uh, the only headphones in around the 1K mark, maybe a little bit less, that will uh, pose a slight uh, problem or just will sound very similar in terms of soundstage, I do believe uh, uh, Hyphaman Edition XS and uh, Moondrop Venus, which are also very impressive in the soundstage. All in all, if you love music in their playing with your mind, always feeding your imagination and just opening your third eye, then this is a very easy recommendation to make. When it comes to detailed retrieval, there is a lot of information going on to the surface and 
not only in the treble region, but everywhere in the frequency response. Uh, something that was not happening on 99 Classics. They have a much better timing and subsequently a better detailed retrieval. Uh, the smallest intricacies uh, are much easier to spot and something that felt almost impossible on 99 Classics. This is actually much clearer and much more resolving even compared to several mid-range headphones like um, Odyssey LCD2, like uh, Haifaman Ananda, like Kenaton Valley, like LZ Mania. Those are all great sounding headphones and I actually like them all, but these are just clearer sounding by comparison. And this, uh, I like this change of pace, this new mesa sound, this new tuning, uh, because I cannot stand a lack of resolution, I cannot stand a limited frequency response, and that's why I wasn't a huge fan of 99 Classics. I like this kind of sound a lot more, that is more extended, that is more reference. Uh, these are definitely sounding more like reference headphones. Moving on to frequency response, as my measurements will later reveal, they have an amazing bass response. So starting even with the sub bass region, it is actually very impressive. There is a very gentle roll off below 30 Hz, but still I can hear pretty easily those 20 Hz, 22, 25 Hz with some bass intensive music. So again, uh, they are very impressive in the bass. Uh, what else? They have a slight elevation in the mid bass, but not that much by around 2 dB, which works in their favor, adds a little bit of fullness, of oomph, some fun factor, and, you know, considering that they have these uh, velour ear pads, I do believe that a slight elevation actually is a very good idea. Uh, of course, they are very fast, very clean sounding in the bass. Uh, this is a very layered uh, type of bass. You can hear small intricacies in the bass, so they are very detailed sounding in the bass. You can make them more impactful, more thumpier sounding, but for that you'll need some leather ear pads that will be solving uh, the biggest issue that I have with them, and that is bass lamp. So again, you can improve that. You just need some the right ear pads. Maze, you know what to do. <laughs> Probably the only region that doesn't need an introduction, some additional tweaks to sound great, uh, is the mid-range on Maze Audio headphones. And in a headphone world, I do believe that mid-range is synonym with Mezi Aonde because everything they do is great sounding in the mid-range. You know, starting with Rai Solo, Rai Penta, uh, 99 Classics, uh, Imperial Elite, everything sounds great in the mid-range and this is really no different. I listen to plenty of uh, acoustic stuff, you know, jazz, blues, rock, this is what I'm listening to the most and 99% of the sounds that we hear as humans happens in the mid-range and if you do mid-range right everything will sound natural, organic and that's exactly what I'm hearing with 109 Pro. Uh, woodwind instruments, uh, string instruments, voices, everything sounds good roll, very, has a very natural vibration, very nice decay. Uh, voices, uh, you know, when are trying to reach the crescendo moments, uh, I get those goosebumps and uh, I hear that and I feel that only with great sounding speakers and headphones that are doing mid-range right. So again, I cannot complain about the mid-range. There is just a straight line from 30 Hz to about 1 kHz on these ones uh, on my measurement rig. So again, these are doing mid-range just fine. I'm still discovering their Elite headphones. I have maybe a few hours on them, but holy smokes, these are so extended in the treble, um, so much so that I don't remember any other Meze headphone that is so strong in the treble, so defined, so extended, so clean sounding. You know, it's a 180 degree turn compared to 99 classics that have that massive roll off in the upper treble. Uh, these are not like that. These actually have a slight peak in the treble. At around 8, 8.5 kilohertz there is a small peak that is not a big problem for me but it can become a small issue with some setups especially with some uh, THX AAA amplifiers with some ultra linear ultra revealing amplifiers like NFC amplifiers for example so again uh, you should do some small research maybe some uh, use a warmer, smoother sounding setup because the treble is actually very powerful in here. 
I also measured them and this is their raw frequency response and as you can see their drivers are exceptionally matched. They offer a straight line from 30Hz to around 1kHz, suggesting an exemplary bass and mid-range performance. You can see a minor roll-off in the bass, but that's normal behavior as most open back headphones are doing the same. The most sensitive part of our hearing isn't looking scary, but immediately after that a generous 80dB rise could pose a problem for people that cannot stand harsh trebles. The spectrogram shows a minor ringing of the caps in the bass, but I don't see nasty distortions building up anywhere else. Luckily, distortion reading is looking great, and at around 84 dB, there is very little distortion. Spectral decay looks uh, good, and it's mirroring my subjective opinion that we're dealing with a super fast sounding headphone. I also compared them with a pricier Kenneton Valley and much pricier uh, LZ Mania headphones, but for that you'll need to check out my written review that I put below, because this video is already way too long. In the end we got an awesome looking headphone and a great sounding one as well that won't murder your wallet for good. While it's much pricier versus 99 Classics, I do believe that performance wise everything tripled, so much so that competitor headphones will have a hard time beating them at their own game. I'm glad that transit response is much better now, they have a much better detailed retrieval, uh, they have a much wider frequency response and also the sound stage improved as well and I don't know really a headphone that improved as much compared to their predecessor and for this and many other reasons I do believe that they fully deserve my absolute highest gold award. Okay guys, uh, please check out my full in-depth review below, it contains literally about four times the information of this video, and as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive, and I'll see you all now. Cheers!